Welcome to iLecture Online. In our quest to really understand the universe and space itself, we're going to talk about something in this video that is typically not found in textbooks because it doesn't match the theory of the Big Bang. But I believe there are holes in the theory and this is one of the reasons why I think so. So I welcome anyone who's familiar with this kind of thing to look at it and say, well, I don't agree with you and this is why. Where's the holes in the logic that I'm using here? So, let's begin. We all do realize that there was a time that the universe was smaller than it is today and the universe was a lot hotter than it was today. And there was a time that the temperature of the universe was greater than 3000 Kelvin. So the universe was kind of like being inside a star. It was so hot that all the electrons had been stripped away from the protons for hydrogen and the nuclei of helium because at that time the universe primarily 75% hydrogen and 25% helium but all the atoms had simply be, been ionized and it was a big soup of protons, nuclei and electrons swarming around and so the region being the universe was completely opaque to radiation radiation could not move freely through the universe at some point the universe continued to cool down until the temperature dropped below 3000 kelvin at that point it was cool enough for the electrons to join the hydrogen or the, to join the protons to form hydrogen and for the electrons to join the helium nuclei to form helium and all of a sudden there were no free floating electrons and radiation was free to flow through the entire universe the, that radiation that had been locked up until then we estimate that was about 380,000 years after the Big Bang after the beginning of the Big Bang we call that event the decoupling where radiation was decoupled from matter and now radiation was free to roam through the universe but there was something very unique about that radiation, absolutely astounding. The frequency and wavelength of that radiation was exactly the same for all the radiation in the universe. At that point, there were, yet, there were no stars yet, so there were no starlight, there was no galaxies, so it was pitch black, pitch dark, because that radiation that was everywhere was in the infrared range, so there was no visible radiation visible light radiation in the universe it was simply pitch black and that radiation began to free flow in all directions notice that when we use Wien's law that tells us that we take the number 0.0029 meter times temperature or maybe I should call it times Kelvin because that's the unit for temperature and let's call that Kelvin as well there we go and we divide that by the temperature of the universe at the time about 3000 Kelvin we come out with a wavelength of about one micrometer, a thousand nanometers, which is well into the infrared range. And so the entire universe was filled with radiation of about the exact same wavelength and frequency, about one micrometer. Well, we also realize that the universe has been expanding and the expansion of the universe has essentially stretched all the radiation in the universe. So this radiation that was simply filling the, the universe at the time had continued to be stretched as space continued to expand and now the temperature of the universe is about 2.7 Kelvin that means that the wavelength of that very same radiation which we now call the CMB the cosmic microwave background which is everywhere in the universe well that radiation has now expanded to a, to a wavelength of about a millimeter which is a thousand micrometers so it has expanded in wavelength a thousand fold because the universe essentially has dropped in temperature a thousand fold and that's due to the expansion of space which has expanded about the thousand fold and that's part of the key the second key was that around 1965 there were two Bell laboratory engineers they're called Penzias and Wilson who by accident discovered the CMB they had built uh, an infrared telescope and they were trying to measure things in space and no matter which direction they pointed their telescope in they kept on getting this radiation this radiation of a thousand micrometers 
and it was noise. They wanted to get rid of it because they wanted to see what was out there. And of course, this was interfering with their experiment. And they tried for the longest time to get rid of it. They cleaned it. They, they thought it was all kinds of things wrong. They recalibrated. They did everything they could to get rid of this bothersome interference. But finally, they began to realize, and other people around the world began to realize, that they had found what some people had predicted already, the CMB, the Cosmic Microwave Background. And what was amazing about it was that no matter which direction they pointed their telescope in, in all directions, up, down, left, right, down, up, in any direction, the intensity was exactly the same and the wavelength was exactly the same in all directions. Now realizing that electromagnetic radiation continues to move in a straight path, and it has been moving in the same direction for 13.7 billion years, that means that it started 13.7 billion light years away in all directions. So coming back to that, there was a time that there was an edge of the observable universe where that CMB radiation, of course, were flowing in all directions, but I'm only showing the radiation at the edge of the observable universe that's now on its way towards the Earth. And 13.7 billion, uh, billion years later, it reached the Earth, but of course it had stretched from one micrometer length to a thousand micrometers in length. Hmm. Well, that means that the universe here from the Earth to the edge of the universe from where this radiation started was 13.7 billion light years away from us. And since the universe has expanded a thousand fold in diameter, because otherwise the radiation couldn't have become a thousand micrometers in length, that means that now the radius of the universe today must be at least a thousand times what it was 13.7 billion years ago at the point of decoupling, 380,000 years after the Big Bang which means that now the radius of the universe must be at least 13.7 trillion light years in radius. A thousand times the observable universe. And I really can't think of any other explanation for this because essentially we know the diameter must have increased a thousand fold which means that the volume must have increased a billion fold. A thousand cubed is a billion. So whatever the size of the universe was 13.7 billion years ago, it has now grown to a billion times the volume, a thousand times the radius. At the very least, that's assuming that that was the absolute size of the universe back then. And the universe, of course, could have been a lot bigger because any radiation of the CMB that was farther away than 13.7 billion years, or light years, I should say, that could not have reached us yet. So because of that, the universe must be at least this big in size and very likely bigger than that. This far, far outpaces the size that we imagined the universe was with the old theories that we've been using. Putting this all together, it must be at least this big and probably bigger. Oh, Earth. I tend to do that. There. Thank you. So if that's only one micrometer. That's what it used to be 13.7 billion years ago. Yeah, but then you say that and space is expanded, and all the radiation space is expanded with it to where now it is a thousand times as long. So whatever the radiation was here was very tiny. Now it's like this. It's simply been stretched a thousand fold by space.